but you don't know if he's going to be here. How do you weigh the the demand in Canada or desire in Canada to see someone held accountable for this and the diplomatic responsibilities Canada has and the potential consequences? Well, I, again, I, I think that's a very important question, um, and that's what I was getting at yesterday when you asked when the same question was posed, which, which is that at, at the very top of that hierarchy of priorities is the need to hold those who are animating and orchestrating uh, foreign interference accountable for those actions. And that's why we have conventions in place. That's why we have laws in place. And so uh, we continue to um, make sure that our security and intelligence community has the tools that they need. And I think that there are many examples in which we've given new powers to CSIS. Uh, our expectation is that they use them in a manner that is consistent with the Charter and the law to hold those who are responsible for committing foreign interference what accountable. I, what I was trying to get at yesterday was the accountability within Canada. Though. Like, yes, China needs to be held accountable, but does nobody within the Canadian government, whether it's at CSIS, whether it's in the outside CSIS officials, does someone not need to be held accountable for the fact that your predecessor nor the PMO were actually briefed about this and therefore Mr. Chong never found out? As I said, uh, and I underlined this yesterday, it is a serious issue that neither the Prime Minister nor the Public Safety Minister at the time were informed directly by CSIS about the case involving Mr. Chong. And we are now uh, going to great lengths to uh, ensure that there are um, stronger protocols in place when it comes to any allegation or report of foreign interference and parliamentarians so that that information is brought directly to my attention and directly to the attention of the Prime so Ministers and we will continue to make sure that that is the case going forward. So because that directive wasn't in place two years ago, that's why there's no specific accountability outside of, of whatever you're going to do with the Chinese diplomats? Well, those are exactly the questions that we need to get to the bottom of and, and I assure you that that is precisely what we are examining very carefully, so which is, which is, yes, which is why. Um, it's important that we unearth the reasons as to why this was not brought directly to the attention of the public safety minister at the time, as well as the prime minister, because we take these issues seriously. I, I really, I fundamentally reject um, any suggestion by the conservatives that I don't care about the safety of Mr. Chong or his family, or that the government doesn't care about the safety of Mr. Chong or his family. Um, we have extremely intense debates uh, about our politics here in Canada uh, and that has been one of the main hallmarks of how we you know, get at good ideas and, po and policies, but that never ever uh, would, would detract from the responsibility of the government for making sure that an MP is able to do their jo job. And I, I cannot emphasize that enough um, because the whole point of foreign interference is to undermine our democracy. And if you politicize that debate and suggest or impugn some kind of ill motive, you are feeding into that. So and so, no, it's not and it won't work. And those who are um, um, orchestrating these foreign interference activities need to know that. They are not going to succeed. Okay? Uh, uh, well, we'll have more to say. Thanks very much. Okay.